pilot's license, owns two Cessna aircraft, a world of knowledge, 17 years with the RAF. So, and let me give a big round of applause to Barbara uh, Jones. Thanks very much. Thanks very much, everybody, um, and particularly the Sydney Flying Club, Joe, Mr. President, Mr. Vice President, for having me here, and particularly want to stress for the wonderful, wonderful support that Angel Fly gets and has for many, many, many years from this club. And a big thank you also to our pilots. We have quite a few here. And Sydney Flying Club has always uh, supported us with pilots, people who uh, are giving their time, but with the support of the club. And a partnership like this is extremely valuable to us. New South Wales accounts for uh, almost half of our flights throughout Australia, unsurprisingly because of the population base. Just briefly outlining what we do, we have uh, at this stage, we have uh, 3,200 registered pilots, most with their own aircraft, but that does include quite a lot of flying schools, uh, as I said, so that's, that's very core business for us. And it's also helpful in getting young pilots involved because a lot of our pilots, unsurprisingly, are in the retirement age, uh, successful businessmen usually who can afford their own aircraft and afford to run it. Uh, but of course, you know, as we age, getting the, particularly the class one medical, get, gets a little harder. And, and uh, so we, we really do encourage this rising amount of, of uh, young pilots coming through to, to help us out. What we do uh, with the drivers as well, we have 4,500 registered drivers throughout Australia. And they too volunteer their cars and their time to drive people and that's a really significant part of the journey. Many of you perhaps who live in Sydney uh, wouldn't be able to grasp the difficulty for some, uh, whether it's mum and three little kids in tow or a couple of people in their 80s coming into Sydney, driving in and then once getting near the city somehow, having to get over to one of the hospitals, having to get to North Shore, having to get to Westmead, for example, find the way there, battle the motorways, then good luck, find a car park, and then pay $25 a day for that privilege. It's horrendous. It's a really difficult thing. Uh, as much as our pilots, they really are our heroes as well. The way it works is we, uh, our, our core people in the bush really, and at some of the bigger hospitals are, are the medical staff because we take people referred from the health professionals so we don't take people uh, who approach us directly if they do approach us directly we will then say well who's your medical practitioner go and see them and if you can't get any help we'll talk to them they just have to register on our website it's very easy to do once they've registered they become a referrer the reason we need that generally speaking, is we need to know A, that they have a need to travel, and B, that they're fit to fly in a light aircraft, unpressurised and with some of the um, dexterity that's needed to get in and out of some aircraft. So we need that letter from the doctor. We get them to refer people who have a need. Now, I always tell people, you know, we're not Centrelink, we're not the ATR, we're not CASA. So if, if the medical professional says this person has a need, they know this patient, they know whether they have a need. Need is not always money. If you live at uh, White Rock or if you live at Quilby um, or if you live at the back of Berg, often you can't get a flight even if you could pay for one. And these aren't people who would pay for a charter flight. They would never charter an aircraft. They just aren't in that financial bracket but a lot of them aren't in towns either where they can even get a Rex flight or something similar. So need is assessed by them and if they assess the need, then we, ex we accept that. So we don't go investigating the bank accounts and stuff like that. So then, then it's over to a flight request, comes in from the medical professional and then we get going there. I've got a team of five young ladies, uh, flight coordinators, 
and they're just marvellous and I try to employ young people who just happen to be girls, they seem to do things a lot better sometimes. <laughs> um, and there's a lot of logistics in this, quite apart from just liaising pilot, driver, health professional, passenger. But we have to do a lot of checks on documents, uh, we insist on getting copies of pilot documents. Uh, so we check those each time there is a flight. So we don't ask you to produce them again, of course. But we flag your currencies, we flag your rating, your endorsements, we flag uh, when your uh, proficiency checks are due and, or your AFRs, whatever it is you're doing. So that, that flags to us and if somebody applies for a flight, all of those documents are checked. And uh, often it'll be just, even asset cards now, uh, and, and so we just have to say, well, yeah, can you send us a copy of your, of your renewed asset card? And it's, it's all about safety, it's all about reliability. Why we require 250 in command? I know some of the young instructors will say, and they do say to me quite often, but hang on, I've got an instructor rating, and yet you're letting private pilots fly. Yeah, but I, I want the 250 in command, because in command, as, as all pilots will know, that, that's the time when you're making real decisions and there's no backup for you. You're on your own. We are requiring 250 in command and we require uh, five hours on type in 12 months for VFR, IFR 10 hours on type. And so we are above the standard that CASA itself requires in private flight. The people that you carry are absolutely grateful and we can keep going with the help of people like this club. And the public, uh, you, you may or may not know, we don't fundraise, we don't spend money on marketing, merchandising, promotions, no telemarketers or no marketing companies get a cent of our donor money. And we don't ask for government funding. But what happens is, it's, it's amazing, the will of the people, especially in the country towns, uh, they all raise funds for us. It'll be Probus and Lions councils. I, I went to Quilpie recently on the border, far west, Queensland, New South Wales, and uh, the council put on an angel flight day there, massive fundraiser, because we're in and out of Quilpie all the time with their people helping. So that's, that's how we get our funding. We never ask for it. If people donate to us, we give them a nice letter and a receipt, but you never hear from us again. You'll never get that phone call saying, well, hey, you donated last year, and it's totally private unless you want it to be otherwise. So we're pretty unique charity in Australia. We're never going to be massive, like, like your huge public charities that engage the marketing companies, but we can hand on our heart say that when people give us money, most of it goes to uh, aircraft fuel, we give the drivers a $25 or a $50 fuel voucher, depending on how far they've got to drive, and about 15% goes on administration costs. And we don't buy assets, we don't own assets, except wonderful staff, our database and website, and our computers, that's it. So it's a unique charity that so far has helped over 60,000 people since 2003, and getting bigger and better all the time. Hence why I like to come. I thank people like this club for their amazing support. But to tell people about it, get people interested, you can come and do these flights. And a lot of the younger instructors, they'll, they'll do it via um, dead legging. And so they're getting a couple of hours every time until they built up their hours. And, and still there's a cost. We're well aware of that. But the fuel is something that can help. So what, uh, what I'd like to do is play a little video. You all seen the one I start off with. It's our advertisement, which is free, uh, played for us by the, um, uh, all the television, all the networks in Australia. So you'll have seen that a little 60 second ad. So I'll play that and then just three minutes of some of the stories of the pilots and the passengers really gives you a great understanding of how this all works. So I'm just going to ask for these front lights to be turned off so you can see
like to tell you a few very short, very human stories. There are many thousands of such stories in Angel Flight's history. These stories are not typical. Angel Flight has no typical stories. Every mission is unique and tailored to the needs of each passenger. We help rural Australians with health problems, with family struggles and serious financial worries. Australians with quite enough trouble without the daunting distances to travel for essential medical treatment. All Angel Flight services are free with volunteer pilots and volunteer drivers helping their passengers as if they were family. This is Poppy. She has a balance disorder that still has no specific diagnosis. She needs ongoing trips from her home in Coffs Harbour to Brisbane's Royal Children's Hospital. Leonie became profoundly deaf at age 47. In a pre-surgical check for a cochlear implant, a brain aneurysm was found. With a young family and living south of Sydney at Marimbula, Angel Flight has helped Leonie nearly a hundred times. Kayla made nearly 400 flights with Angel Flight from her home in Chinchilla to Brisbane. Most of these flights were to receive hemolytic dialysis as early as sickness had left her with no kidneys. The Angel Flight team is dealing with up to 20 such missions every day of the week. If we have to drive to Sydney, it takes about five hours. Going on Angel Flight, it's an hour, a bit over an hour. Um, it's just absolutely wonderful. They're just fantastic. They're absolutely fantastic. Not enough people know about them. I tell everyone I know about them. Now, meet some of the real Angel Flight heroes, the pilots and drivers who volunteer so much to help those doing it so tough. We can see the need for people to get back into the city for specialist care and we're more than willing to help. We wanted to put something back into the community and we saw a great connect between our joy of flying and the pleasure we've had out of it and uh, the opportunity to use that through the charity. Life's been pretty kind to me. Uh, I'm fortunate to be able to use an aircraft in my business and it's, it's one small thing I can do in return. Well, rather than just making donations to organisations, it's much, I find it's much better this way because you get to meet the people who you're dealing with and you can see the need there too. Travel by road from Coffs Harbour to Brisbane made Poppy nauseous for days. With Angel Flight's help, she now avoids all travel side effects and is showing steady improvement. Leone continues flights for treatment in Canberra. She now has a second cochlear implant and with ongoing adjustment is hearing better and better. Kayla received a kidney transplant in 2008, which was functioning perfectly until 2011 when it sadly failed. Kayla passed away in 2013. So that's Angel Flight, providing free of charge, non-emergency medical transport for rural people of all ages needing to travel to and from treatment centres Australia-wide. Passengers are treated with sensitivity and respect, often beyond any they have ever experienced. Passengers are met on arrival in often strange and frightening cities by an equally caring volunteer driver who befriends them and takes them to hospital or accommodation. Angel Flight receives no government funding, relying solely on donations. We have no fundraising staff and spend no money on fundraising activity. Over 85 cents of every dollar donated is spent on aviation fuel and flight coordination. Angel Flight is nothing without the wonderful help of the many thousands of volunteer drivers and pilots who give selflessly of their time, their cars, their planes and their skill to help fellow Australians going through a very tough patch. Thank you very much. We're busy, we've got pilots involved from uh, Jandakot, uh, Geraldton and Carnarvon and uh, we're regularly flying out to the communities. I have one group of ladies who comes in three at a time and a pilot uh, who comes up from Jandakot and he goes up there to this community uh, to the far east, on the east coast or I think of the sea being on the wrong side, but uh, out, in the, out in the desert communities in the east. And then he takes the ladies in for their checkups, the obstetrics patients into Carnarvon and then takes them back the next day. Now they, these girls, uh, some of them are in their seventh month of pregnancy, had never had a checkup, and that was because they had a 14-hour drive 
across the desert. So, why would you? In, in rough old cars. But we have everybody from your private pilot, local businessmen, your commercial pilots. We've got some of you may know when we did our Bankstown 20,000th flight last year, and we had Glenn Stevens as the pilot, our then uh, Reserve Bank of Australia governor. But he's just Glenn with a hat on. Uh, nobody knows who he is now. We've got another fellow who flies out of Moorabbin, and uh, he doesn't own his own aircraft, but he's he's up to 450 flights for us now. And uh, he, he flies a uh, sometimes a Cirrus and a TBM. Uh, that's Angel Flight. Any of you pilots or, or drivers out there who want to get on board, uh, we'd love to, to hear from you. It's a very simple process. Log on and uh, start the process and we take it from there. So that's Angel Flight. Um, thanks again and thanks very much to the Sydney Flying Club. But if you've got any questions and doesn't matter how hard they are, I'll answer them. You can register as a pilot with us and so you become one of the volunteer pilots but you just won't be allocated a, a mission until you meet the criteria. Um, but that will enable you to be part of the, the volunteer team and what you can then do is you can post on that internal Facebook page, tell people other pilots, here I am and I'm willing and ready to help because it's better if somebody's done it and Sydney Flying Club is one of the ones that does this very well and, and has a mentoring system in a sense where the junior pilot will go along and then on the dead leg it's not just gathering hours, I mean we have um, uh, training, I know uh, Conrado used to do training in the twins on, on the way and sometimes he'd have two or three pilots with him doesn't matter to us, we're still going to pay the fuel anyway, it doesn't matter what you do on the way back. Uh, and even on the way out, it, it's often good for a famil, for uh, the right seat of a new aircraft and do a famil out. So um, that, that's, that's a perfect way to do it and it's a win-win for everybody uh, and especially a win-win for our passengers. I'm, I'm embarrassed to buy a trade and I'm, because I'm used to being paid by the word, it's been hard to stop me. <laughs> yeah, you, you can do whatever you like. You, yeah. you log on, become a driver, and okay. the only thing uh, that, that's needed is obviously a license and you have to tell us that you have insurance. Mm -hmm. And uh, whatever it is in this state that you require, such as a blue card yeah. or similar. Yeah. And then we log you on as a driver. So what you do is then you get access to the bulletin board. Okay. So whenever you know you've got some time, think, well, I've got a day off in two weeks' time, jump on the bulletin board, and if there's a trip that suits you, you just log on to that trip, and then the coordinators will take over from there. So it doesn't matter. Once you've registered, um, as long as your documents are current, it doesn't matter how how often or how seldom you do the trips. You choose. I have a question. How many choppers do you have? I think at the moment we've got three in Queensland. Uh, and what, what they often do for us, and, and did quite a bit last year and the year before, is go out to the stations. And uh, we have quite a few trips out to the more remote stations taking medical supplies, particularly for the children. Uh, and sometimes some of those properties are cut off for six to eight weeks. So we do quite a lot of uh, medical drop-offs for the kids. Of course, we can, we can bring them back in if they need treatment as well. Uh, but normally they aren't scheduled for regular treatment in the wet season. And if they're serious, then a care flight or a medical emergency chopper will go. But we certainly do use them quite a lot for um, supply drop-offs, medical supplies. Thanks. Thanks very much for having me. Um, we do thank you for ever so much for coming out to say good day to us here in Sydney, and uh, we welcome you back soon. Thank you. I, and and Joe did say I'd never been here before. I hadn't been in here before, but I remember landing in Bankstown once before we had Oz Runways and before I had a GPS, so that just goes back a while. And um, 
It wasn't pretty. <laughs> but I didn't get a fine and Cassie didn't ring me and nobody else did. <laughs> when the tower rings you, it's trouble. Yeah.